Whenever I'm in a big home center, I like to visit the hardwood lumber rack and chuckle over what they charge for each board. If I had to pay those kind of prices for the lumber I used in my shop, I wouldn't be able to afford woodworking. Luckily, I have a job where I can get my lumber straight from the forest, which I never fail to appreciate. So it's fairly common where a landowner will ask me, what's this red oak worth? So I'll scale it up. 170 board feet at 70 cents a per board foot, that tree's worth about $115 or so. And they'll say, is that all? If one board is worth $88 and you could saw dozens that size out of a tree, how come each tree isn't worth hundreds or even thousands of dollars? And that will lead to an entire conversation about grade. So I'm making this model of a tree to illustrate how the form of the tree will determine the grades of lumber you get out of each log. Here we have a pretty typical branching pattern for any given tree. We're going to do a scaled down run through of felling it, bucking it into length, and milling it into boards. The first thing a logger will do after felling a tree is to cut off the limbs and top. Then the logger has to make some very important decisions about where to cut each log to length. So on our tree, you can see we've got one section here that's completely free of knots. You've got a middle section with the occasional knot in it. And then you've got the top section that's just completely riddled with knots. So a logger would bucket to length, kind of isolating each section of similar grade. So this is a pretty fair facsimile of a head saw in a large mill. They'll take the round log and push it through the band mill, squaring it up into a cant. And the squared up cant at the mill will be sent through a resaw which peels off boards one at a time. So here we have our three batches of sawn lumber. The butt log gave us clear boards that were similar to the ones that we saw at Home Depot. The middle batch are fairly nice boards with a knot here and there in them. And the top log gave us boards so riddled with knots that they're only good for pallets or railroad ties or things like that. If you look at any sawmill's list of log prices, you'll find that the highest grade will be multiples of what the lowest grade prices are. Now, a natural tree is going to have a wide amount of variation to it. The butt log might have excessive heartwood or sapwood, or it might have carpenter ant holes, or it might have streaks of discoloration in them. Your middle log might have limbs on one side of the tree, but not the other side. The tree might be so unusually tall that you'll have a clear log even into the upper reaches of it. But I made our examples very cut and dry just to illustrate my point. So to walk it backward from Home Depot, you'll notice that this is a perfect board with not one speck or streak on it. Your 12 inch width will cost a premium because it takes a big tree to yield lumber that wide. It has been planed and kiln dried, given its retail markup, run through distributors. By the time you reach the local sawmill, you might be able to buy unsorted, green, rough sawn boards for $2 a board foot. Take away milling costs, trucking, cut and skid, and you'll arrive at stumpage prices. That is, what a landowner gets paid for standing trees, leaving the buyer to worry about all the production costs. We have come a long way from the suburban retail store, physically and money-wise. That isn't to say that there aren't trees worth big money. If a hardwood is unusually large, unusually straight and tall, and of the finest possible quality, you may get quoted astounding prices. But the key word here is unusual. When you're harvesting 20, 50, 100 acres of land, cutting dozens or hundreds of trees of all different species and grades, you can't dwell on what you get for the best tree on your property.